So with that, the one technical thing that seems to have worked today is we have six amazing high school students who are here and they're gonna talk to Bruce and I and I'm gonna need someone to do a tap dance while I move the technical component of getting them in for their video and then I'll let them introduce themselves. Dr. Benz, do you wanna hang around and do a song for me? Uh, sure, I'm taking requests, but before I do that, I do just want to put a plug in for all of the kids out there that are doing the work that their teachers are assigning to them. Just a reminder, parents, kids are getting assignments now and activities that they are expected to complete and submit. And most of the kids are doing it. And if you're not, please start turning it in or you'll be having uh, some very, uh, close Zoom conversations with your teacher and your parents sometime in the near future. But just shout out to everybody that's, that's getting it done and doing it in their, in their rooms and wherever they can find the place and the time. Looks like we got some high schoolers here, Corey. And with that, I'm sending you back to where you can't talk. Kids, do your homework. That's a message from our chief academic officer. Seriously, we, um, we understand that these are tough, and uh, tough times. Um, our teachers are working hard to provide learning opportunities for kids, and we just hope that all of our students are, are doing as best they can. Um, we know that these are challenging times for everyone, given the, the national job loss, the health crisis that we're in. Um, and on that very exciting note, we want to talk to six high school students um, from all six Leander ISD high schools. How are y'all doing? Do you want to introduce yourselves one at a time? I'm going to call on you one at a time for you to introduce yourselves like we practice. Let's go ahead and we'll start with Gabby. Hi, I'm Gabby Hammerbach and I'm a senior at Leander High School um, and I'm a captain on the tennis team. And then we're going to go to Avery. I'm Avery Smith. I'm a senior at Rouse High School and I'm the editor-in-chief of Raider Rumbler. Welcome Avery. Good to see you again. Gigi. Hi, I'm Giselle Muniz and I'm a junior and a broadcast student for Cedar Park High School. Welcome Giselle. We love having you here. Israel. Hi, I'm Israel Ramirez. Um, I'm the drum captain at Vandergrift and I'm the vice president of Spanish Honor Society. Awesome, awesome, welcome. I don't know the way I was doing this is gone. There it is. All right, Harveen. Hi, I'm Harveen Thar. I'm a senior at Mr. High School and I'm the current student body president and senior class secretary. Awesome, thanks for joining us. Josh, how are you doing, sir? Good, how are you doing? My name is uh, Josh Russell. I'm a senior at Glen High School. I'm a track athlete and the president of a writing club. So Bruce, I know you have your own students at home. What would you like to ask or know about from our students? They're gonna raise their hand virtually and I'm gonna go ahead and call on them. Um, but if Bruce, you wanna start off and, and feed a question to our student panel. Thank you, Corey. Um, well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here today, and it's really great to see you. So tell us, what is what has been the most challenging thing for you um, at this time as seniors in high school with really having your spring semester of your senior year essentially taken away from you? Tell, tell us a little bit about how that feels for you. All right, we're going to go to Giselle. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Gabby. Um, the hardest part for me has been everything not being as I expected and not being normal. Um, I haven't gotten to see my friends on Friday nights. Um, I don't get to go to work on the weekends. I really love my job. Um, I don't get to go to practice and see my teammates. So just everything not being the way I expected has been really difficult to process and understand. Israel, do you want to share or add on to that? Yeah, so just coming off of like a really competitive like band season in the fall specifically with like a lot of structure and like organization with like after school rehearsals multiple times a week to 
basically having to do it all on our own um, at home remotely through all the assignments that we have, as well as like trying to keep up with our music. Um, I guess in the band world specifically, it's been a little bit difficult just because there's not that much structure that we would have seen in the fall. So just the independence aspect of it's been pretty difficult to kind of adjust to. Harveen? Um, I think something that's pretty difficult so far is that, uh, so I'm involved in a lot of clubs and so we've been preparing all year for certain competitions and stuff like that. So with the cancellation of a lot of these, um, our, a lot of our clubs do have Zoom meetings where we catch up, but it's not really the same. There's a lot of different situations that we don't know how to address because you don't have enough information. And because most of us in the clubs are seniors who are going to graduate, we don't get the chance to do what we've been doing the whole year possibly ever again. So that's a little bit difficult to understand. Avery, is there something you'd like to share as well? Um, yeah. Um, it's just, uh, so I'm part of UIL academics and like how we're having to adjust to not having things anymore. Uh, UIL, it's been postponed for right now. So we have been practicing through the whole entire year and it was supposed to be in April and through May for like districts and regionals. And so that's just like really hard to like see all the memories from last year and then like know that it may not happen this year and we, like none of us get the opportunity to even try to go to state this year. And there are several of you who are who are competing in things in the spring. I know Josh, you're a track athlete, um, and all of the different things going on. Um, Bruce, did you have another question you wanna you wanna feed the students? Yes, I do. Um, you know, as seniors in your spring semester, most of you are looking forward to the transition to your next step in your careers and so tell me a little bit about your thinking about next year and and how you're planning you know that transition if you've applied to colleges most of you have been accepted at various places um, but may not have selected your final choice yet or may have uh, talk to us a little bit about you know what's going on in that transition um, so I'm going to be attending East Texas Baptist University in the fall. I am just a little nervous about my AP exams because I was relying on some of the um, scores to get some extra credits there. And I don't know how I'm going to feel about an online test. And I was, I'm really hoping for those credits. But other than that, I'm pretty excited about getting to be on my own. Avery, I see you have a hand up too. Would you like to share? Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to the University of Texas in the fall. And um, we just found out that uh, our freshman orientation is going to be online. And so that's a little difficult for me because I don't know a whole bunch of people that are going there. And so I thought freshman orientation was where I was going to be able to meet all of my friends. And so now it's like I don't know how that's going to work with everything being online. Harveen? Yeah, so I'm currently narrowing down my choices for universities, but most likely I'll be attending Rice University in the fall. And so what I've heard recently is that a lot of universities are suggesting that the guidelines that we currently have for social distancing and to keep ourselves safe because of the pandemic is gonna follow through at some type of level. So that's what I'm a little concerned about is that how in August, hopefully the situation is better than what it is now, but how things will function at a collegiate level because it's a lot of students in one setting and that I don't know how safe that will be in August because right now we're all at home, but it's kind of weird not knowing exactly how college is going to start because we've always grown up with the assumption and the expectation that we're going to attend these events as a freshman and do these activities, but it's kind of all up in the waters right now, so that's kind of difficult to comprehend. Josh, what are you thinking about for your, your transition out of high school? What does that look like for you? Yeah, so um, I'll be going to uh, UT Austin, and we'll, we'll hopefully in the fall. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been a little difficult because uh, it's not as, as expected. 
um, like orientation is now online. And for the honors program, we were supposed to have this um, induction type ceremony. I don't think we're going to have that now. And so it's just kind of weird going into such a big thing like college without the, the regular aspect of it. Well, Avery, we've connected you with, with Josh. So there's two Longhorn freshmen. Are you guys going to do a, a, a hook em horns for us real quick? There you go. There, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you would have needed the freshman orientation in, in person. Um, so, Gigi, you're in a unique situation. You're, our, you're a junior, um, so you're not at that point where you're getting ready for a transition to school, but you're in that point where I know it's, it's crunch time um, for, for grades and things like that. How are, how are you doing right now as a junior knowing that you're transitioning to that big senior year? stressed and concerned about like some of like my grades not necessarily my grades but like I would like to I wanted to like take the SAT and the ACT again and I'm not sure how that's gonna work and also I I am a little concerned about like the grading and the GPA for this semester because like as I read in the emails it's not going to like our grades for this semester is not gonna count towards the GPA which is, I don't think it's too much of a problem for me, but usually like I've noticed that I always do better on the second semester than the first. So it's just a little frustrating, even though I understand that the district is doing all they can and everyone's doing all they can to like make things good for their students. So I want y'all to be able to ask Bruce a couple questions because we have the superintendent here. I know that, and he can weigh in on this if that's a question y'all want to ask him. The, the grading thing, I think, was probably one of the hardest decisions that we had to make. Um, I know that our teaching and learning team and our principals weighed lots of different things, but at the end of the day, this, this thing hits people in different ways. Um, you know, I, how record it went from record unemployment in this country to record um, low unemployment to record high un unemployment, and, and it just seemed hard to kind of keep keep expecting that normal I think with grades for everybody not knowing how it was going to impact every student but we definitely understand man working really hard as a, as a student and getting ready that's, that's got to be tough um and we under we understand that that's also um yeah it, it's just an unfortunate situation do any of you have a question for Bruce or Bruce were you about to say something yeah I, I just wanted to jump in on that if I could because those decisions are so, so difficult. And sometimes when you're just watching from the outside, it appears like, you know, we show up in a board meeting, we present something, we chat about it for a few minutes, and then we make a decision. But there has to be an understanding that there's been a lot of churning that's happened behind the scenes in order to get to that point in time. 